Good evening, everybody. My name is Jim Kilson, and I currently serve as the president of CAMA, the Clinton Area Ministerial Association, as well as being the preaching and teaching minister at Lane Christian Church. I'd like to welcome each one of you this evening to our 2021 Good Friday celebration service. Now, tonight's service is going to be different than the ones that we've had in the past in that with uh, the situation as it currently is, we are not able to gather together in person. We so look forward to the day when that will again be our reality, but until that day comes, we are blessed to live in a day and age when we have the technology available to where we can gather together to some degree uh, in spite of the distance that physically separates us. Each church within the Ministerial Association has had a role in tonight's celebration service. Also, during our service this evening, we will be having a time of communion. If you would like to participate in that part of our service, uh, we encourage you to hit pause on the video now so you can prepare the elements and have them ready for when the time comes. It is our hope and our prayer that this time together this evening will be a blessing to you as we remember, as we celebrate the salvation that God has made possible for each one of us through the sacrifice of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. So this evening we worship God together, celebrating this, God's Good Friday.
reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, beginning with verse 32. There were also two others, criminals led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine, and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear a God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that site, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things. Hi, my name is Cody Monkman, and I am the director of the Neighborhood Care Center located here in Clinton. And I am a part of the Clinton Area Ministerial Association. I serve as the treasurer. Um, and so I just want to share with you um, uh, just a few quick stories on how uh, CAMA has been able to help uh, some local families and what this looks like. And so the CAMA funds uh, get distributed to local families in Dewitt County, Maroa, and Hayworth, Illinois. And in order to get uh, connected to CAMA uh, for financial assistance, uh, they visit the Neighborhood Care Center office. And this is where we, we connect with families, um, hear about their circumstances, and then see how uh, CAMA can assist them. And um, we, we are able to assist in a variety of, of ways um, when it, in regards to financial assistance. Uh, sometimes it, it may look like gas vouchers. And then um, in special circumstances, we may help with housing with a hotel room or something like that. But in the last year, uh, it has been interesting to see how things have changed and evolved uh, during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we were able to connect with uh, a family who uh, the wife, uh, her husband, uh, passed away of COVID actually. And he, um, with his passing, also was the loss of the job and the income source. And uh, literally overnight, uh, she became homeless. And um, thankfully now through the Clinton Air Ministerial Association, we were able to assist in getting her uh, not not only uh, permanent housing, but she is uh, reunited with her son who serves in the military 
and lives out in uh, the state of Washington. And so that was uh, a, a pretty crazy encounter that, that God uh, blessed us, uh, Kiama, being a part of and, and helping uh, this lady in, in her time of need. But even uh, just recently, uh, with a house fire, being able to assist uh, community members um, when tragedy uh, strikes overnight. And um, so we thank you for uh, all of our churches that are involved with CAMA, as well as our other local uh, parachurch organizations, and uh, for all of those who give to the CAMA fund. Um, it is the body of Christ that provides these finances that allow us to be able to uh, love our neighbors well. And so thank you for your financial support. Um, we need it in order to be those good neighbors and extending uh, the love of Christ to those around us. So thank you and God bless. One of the great benefits of having these community-wide services is that it brings Christians together of all sizes of churches and different brands of churches. It shows that we are truly one in Christ. And nothing demonstrates that more than participating in the Lord's Supper. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who, who are many are one body, for we all partake from one loaf. And then in the very next chapter of that same letter, Paul writes, for I received from the Lord Jesus what I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink all of it in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your body and your blood, given as a sacrifice, a substitute for us, you took our place on the cross. You paid the debt for our sin. And for that, we are eternally grateful. And I pray that even as there is one body and one cup, that you would unite us in your spirit, that together we would shine as a testimony for you in this community to show your love your grace, your mercy, and what that can mean for those who so desperately need it. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. been drawn through the ages on that line stands the old rugged cross on that cross a battle is raging for the gain of man's soul or his law on one side march the forces of evil 
all the demons and devils of hell. On the other, the angels of glory, and they meet on Golgotha. shakes with the force of the conflict. The sun refuses to shine, for there hangs God's sun in the palace, and then through the darkness And in my heart, the battle still rages. Not all prisoners of war have come home. There were battlefields of my own making. I didn't know that the war had been won. Then I heard that the king of the ages had fought all the battles for me. And victory was mine. like me, you struggle to be a fan of Good Friday. Uh, you struggle to enjoy, to celebrate on Good Friday. And it's not because you don't understand the, the elementary teachings and the magnitude of what Jesus has come to do on Friday. It's not because you don't understand uh, the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross on Friday. It's because for you and for me, Good Friday is filled with all kinds 
of tension. It's the tension that is so agitating and uncomfortable. All we have to do is is literally look all around us in our life and in our living and even in our churches, the, the incarnate presence of God in our world, and we look around and we say, this is not all that we had hoped it could be or would be. We look around and we say, this is what it means to live on Friday. I struggle to be a fan of Good Friday because there is tension. And there's tension for you and I, isn't there? Uh, There's tension uh, because those who are watching this are likely those who have said, I want to follow Jesus. And for any one of us who have uh, decided that we would desire to follow Jesus, Jesus has given us a very clear command uh, that we must take up his cross and follow him, that we must be cross carriers. If I am to be a cross carrier, it means that I must learn to live in the tension of Friday. No, I have to be honest with you. I think I'm okay with Jesus carrying a cross because I understand its results. I'm not always super excited about being a cross carrier myself. I'm not always sure that I want to uh, look and observe the implications of, for my own discipleship, uh, for my own journey with Jesus uh, through the lens of the cross and Good Friday. Because when I look at the Gospels, and I look at the accounts of Jesus on the cross that Friday, I'm not sure that I'm all excited about the disappointment and the suffering and the loneliness and the sadness that I see in Jesus on that Friday. I'm not so sure that I am ready or maybe willing to take upon myself the kind of giving to others that I observe in Jesus on that Friday. I'm not so sure uh, that I am ready to carry the kind of sacrifice that gives all power away in favor of humility the way I see Jesus do so on that Friday. I'm not so sure that I am too keen on taking up a cross when I recognize that it might mean persecution and backlash and insult the way I see Jesus take it on that good Friday. There is a tension of living on Friday. Several years ago, I heard of a story of uh, an Eastern European man. He was a Christian. And every morning when he would leave his home, he would do the customary greetings in Eastern Europe for his Uh, his daughter and his wife and he would leave the house and when he would leave the house he would he would take a Ziploc bag every day he would take a Ziploc bag and in it he would put a toothbrush a tooth tube of toothpaste Uh, he would he would put a picture of his daughter and his wife And he would hold in it a copy of the Bible. 
And when he was asked about, why do you do that? Why every day do you, do you put toothpaste and toothbrush and pictures in the Bible in a plastic bag? And his response was striking. His response was that if he got arrested for being a Christian, he would have the bare essentials. And I look at that and I hear that. And I think, that's someone who knows what it's like to live on Friday. But you don't have to go to Eastern Europe to know what it's like to live on Friday. Uh, many of you already know what it's like to live on Friday. Your bodies told you that it was Friday when you got up this morning. You see, our world is broken. And that's why we have to live in this tension of living on Friday. I thought of many of you uh, who understand the tension of living on Friday. Your, your back aches. You've had to have surgery. Uh, many of you are dealing with a, a family member uh, who has cancer. Some of you are dealing with uh, relational brokenness and emotional anxiety and, and mental strain. And you know what it's like to live on Friday. You see, humanity was cast out of the Garden of Eden as a result and a consequence of rebellion from God, of sin. Uh, we were always supposed to be uh, the perfect representation of who God is in the universe. Uh, we were to be his perfect image. Uh, we were to, to go about uh, manufacturing and managing what he had given. Uh, we were to demonstrate uh, what it looked like in the world when God was in charge. And sin messed it all up. It broke everything. And the consequences are felt in our bodies, in our relationships. And there is, for every single one of us, a tension of living on Friday. And the tension isn't just in our relationships and in our minds and in our bodies. Paul says it's actually in all of creation. Uh, when rebellion from God happened way back in the garden, when we were cast out, uh, there was a rebellion and it needed desperate healing and it affected even creation. Paul says in Romans chapter 8 that creation is longing for that time when when creation, the world, the earth, the ground itself uh, can be released of the tension that exists because of sin. Even creation knows the tension of living on Friday. Paul says this in Romans chapter 8, verse 19 and following. He says, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. In the second half of verse 20, he goes on and says, In hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. And this isn't somebody else's story. No, this is our story. We understand this very tension. And how often have our words sounded like the words of the psalmist in Psalm chapter 6? How long, O Lord? How long? How long until the sin that I wrestle with is gone? 
Uh, How long before the consequences of someone else's sin or the the consequences of my own sin are, are, are a memory? How long must I tie the knot at the end of the rope and keep hanging on? It's the tension of living on Friday. In the Gospels, it's Friday, and Jesus goes and dies, fully God, fully man, and he dies on perhaps the ugliest torture tool that humanity at the time could come up with. And he dies. And at the end, the lights all go out. It's dark. And everybody goes home. It seems that this tension is going to be there forever. It's Friday. It's Friday and there's tension. If you're anything like me, you struggle to be a fan of Good Friday because there's great tension here. And Christians, I would desperately like to take you into the light, but it's not time. You see, today is Friday. And so, I'll leave you with this. I'm going to leave you in the tension of Friday. I'm going to leave you with the lights off. I'm going to leave you for another several moments, days, in the dark. But I will tell you. There's an encore. There's a time coming when it won't be dark anymore. And the tension of Friday will be gone. But for today, today, we live in the tension of Friday. We learn today to live in the tension of the darkness and when the light comes we'll be ready let's pray God it's Friday we don't love the tension of Friday but Lord I pray that as we live in this tension daily as we look at the results all around us, I pray, Lord, that we will follow well until you turn the light back on and release us from this tension because our hope is in you. We love you, Lord. Guide and lead us. We love you. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, on this Good Friday, we reflect on the work that you've done for our benefit. You were put on trial unlawfully and put to death by those who should have loved you. You could have protested, but you remained silent. We are in awe of what you have done out of love for us. We are thankful that you care, that you love us so much, that you've went to the greatest length on the cross to make our salvation possible. We surrender our lives to you this day.
to God be the glory forever and forever. Amen.